Hey guys, I had a heap of these constant current, constant volt voltage sources hanging around the place. I had an old one here, which I'm going to switch over because um, the voltage isn't adjusting properly on it. So, I originally put some fans on them to keep them cool. So I'll play with this and get it working again. But, I've got this other one here. I think I used it for an episode 12 months ago or so. Um, on uh, making my own battery case but I don't think I put it up at that stage because I couldn't get it working properly the way I wanted it to so I left it but I'm going to put it on this material here which I got out of an old uh, laptop actually I stripped down an old laptop and I got that so I need something that will be won't get uh, well Actually, I might change that because if I use this and it does get through that material, then I'm going to have a short. So I might change that to something else. But that was a good idea. I could use these just to clip it apart and just, you know, pull it apart like that. A side, a side pair of tin snips or what you want for something like that. So, but seeing as how there's too much. I might just get a bit of plastic and put it underneath a see-through plastic board and it might look a bit more um, nifty. So I know my bench looks like a total mess that I've been working on other stuff, um, mainly batteries, but I might cut that out. This is out of an old laptop. It's only small, you know, out of the screens of the laptops you'll find this stuff handy for some little jobs so don't throw your laptop screens away so i'm quickly just scoring it with a blade and then i'm going to score it this way because i've just marked it off and i will cut that bit out using just snapping it off but i have to use a blade a bit more so i'll get back to you in a minute once i finish doing it okay so i've double scored either side of the the plastic and I'm going to now use this piece of board here to drill a couple of holes in it to hold it down on onto the bottom of that and then I'll put the fan off the old one onto there and we'll see if we can get some decent power out of it so yeah let's do that So I've screwed one in just to hold it. I'm just using self tappers that I've gotten out of old equipment, which come in handy to do a multitude of jobs around the shed. When you're doing DIY projects, why spend money on stuff that you don't really need to? There's so many screws and things that gets thrown out into the rubbish. So let's keep going with this. Okay, so in the end, I've had to use some some nuts on the ends of a couple of small, I think they're about, I don't know, about, uh, what are they? They're about three, three mil or less, three mil bolts to tie them off. And I broke one little bit in the corner that um, I'm never going to get back, but it's not going to affect the circuit. So yeah, that circuit's now protected underneath. And now I swap over this to that and do these last two screws and pop it onto that. And we're gonna try and get it going. Now these are constant current, constant voltage sources. Very handy to have. Especially when you don't have some of the equipment that you need. I used to, um, have a 30 amp power supply. And I wish I had wish I had it now, but they're quite big. 
they take up most of my desk here or at least from there to about here so yeah not too bad though so we're going to take that off if i can get it off don't want to come off so i'll drop this side down and uh, try and get it off and swap it over So these fans come out of a computer, so they're 12 volt, 0.2 of an amp. You can use them either on a power supply or solar system. Uh, they come, they're qu quite quiet. So I think I pulled these out of a photocopier. But yeah, you should be able to find them online. Not sure about the, the uh, diameter but all the information's there, up the top. So you should be able to just see that right now. Okay, so we'll put them on. So I had to get the drill and give it a bit of a drill out there to get that last screw in, and that'll be sorted out, and then we'll get it going and see what we get out of it. Looks pretty groovy now. Hopefully all that plastic goes flying out when I finish it. Well, guys, I stuffed around all day doing things. So I put a nice new connector on it and I plugged it all in to a server power supply which I've set up and I'll show you that in a minute. And I had the plastic cover on and everything and then I found out that one of these had shorted out. And it wasn't just one. I've got two of these and both of them have shorted out. Now what I've done is I've replaced them with these small green 10k pots and I've just soldered them underneath. You just got to be careful when you're doing it. Uh, they don't fit in the holes, so I thought we'll do it that way. Yeah, it doesn't look anything pretty, but it does the job. It's set up at the moment on 2.4 volts. My red is my constant voltage and my yellow is my constant current source. So, and then we're just going to put the plastic back on underneath to keep it protected. And I will put a new alligator clip on it. And I am going to start charging this battery, which I have sitting here. Now, I know a lot of people have changed over to different battery types, but I'm using this. It's cheap. I've got lots of them. And at the moment, I'm just going with it. Uh, I'll probably change. Oh, hello. Hello, Tiff. What are you doing? You're dropping in, are you? I think Tiffy's hungry. And it's getting a bit late around here, so she is just telling me to do the hurry up. Anyway, I'll try and hurry this up. Okay, we're going to just charge this up now. I've just set this up. It's got a 22K 22, 22, uh, resistor in it between pins... Which pins did I put it on? Going from the earth, coming back, not pin one, but pin two and three uh, for the 22K, and then from the farthest pin towards this side, which is, I think it's about from the earth, one, two, three, four, five, six. Number six to the earth is your turn on pin. I tried to switch, didn't like it. Anyway, this is the original, the original power supply here, and these um, two pots over the side here uh, don't, they're not very good, so they break. So now I've changed it for these two pots here. Now I've got a multimeter set up, it's only a small multimeter, it's called a a Fluke 101. It's not that precise. It's pretty close though. Uh, this little Fluke 101. Hint, hint to uh, people like um, Average Joe. Good little multimeter to have. Um, of course, Average Joe's got a lot more subscribers than me. And it is a lot more funnier than me. And m more interesting than me. Uh, but, so we plug it in. 
We've got a little fan on top to keep it cool. Um, at the moment, my voltage is sitting at 2.385 volts. Now, I do have another, multi another flute multimeter over here. Hint, hint, flute multimeters are pretty good. Um, and I can set that up for a check the amps, but at the moment, this one's broken. So I can't check the final amps on it. AC amps and DC amps so I can probably check it but it's playing up so I'm not going to try it today and it's an old multimeter which I've had a long long time and I'm just going to leave that off long battery here I've adjusted the current up as high as I can go now I can't use this current clamp to test it because it is an AC current clamp we want a DC current current to check this actual setup and I do have another multimeter I'm not sure where it is at the moment uh, I do have like three or four of them so what we're going to do is I'm going to plug it onto there and hopefully we'll be able to see what type of see that that's the only thing with the 101 it doesn't have a current meter on it I've just worked that out that's why it's so cheap Cheap, cheap, really cheap, 101. So if you want a good multimeter, buy that. Anyway, let's do this. I'm raving. Right, so I'm going to turn this off. Or well, maybe I won't. I won't turn it off. Let's see. I'm going to turn it off overnight. But I'm going to hook that onto there. I'm going to hook the other end onto because it's almost just under... 2.4 this is gonna either blow up or it's going to be able to run it so you saw the sparks all good so now charging it now i've brought this this was dead i've brought this back up to about two two volts i think it's about two volts or i won't be able to check at the moment because i've got that hooked onto there but if i disconnect it or a multimeter that works fantastic. So we should be able to see what's it got. It's got about one volt in the whole lot of the pack. So one volt in the pack. So I'll hook that onto there. It's now got a red light on it, which means it's a bit too high. So I'll come down a little bit. I've got to get this thing charged. So at the moment. It's charging with around about three point, or around about just under two, was it two point, I'll check. At the moment it's pushing in, it's sitting around about almost just under two volts at the moment. So, so I will be running this all day tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, actually tomorrow I'm going gold detecting with a couple of uh, guys for some fun. So yeah, we're doing gold detecting tomorrow. But if you like this video and you want to see more of these type of videos, and yeah, if you want me to make packs or if you want me to try out other batteries when I can afford them because I'm not, I haven't got a Patreon and yeah. I don't, um, yeah, I can't afford everything, but we're getting there. So a lot of me multimeters here are old, but they do the job. Anyway, please subscribe, please ring the bell, and I'll catch you on the next one. And Tiffy's ready to go home, so let's have a look at Tiff. She's on her way out home. She's heading home for tea. She's had enough. And that's it from me.